Excellent. Oof. Yeah, well, that's fine. I need a haircut. Yeah, my hair. Ooh, yeah. I'm getting my haircut tomorrow anyway. Let me make sure this thing is. Is this thing listed? Shit. There we go. We've got people. Awesome. <laughs> Need some water before we get started. Hey, everybody. For a second, we just sat there like empty, and I thought this thing was unlisted, and I was like, are we on? <laughs> I, I am so not good with the YouTube lives yet, but we'll get there. How are we all doing? Hi, hello, hello there. Hi. Another thing we're still getting used to is horizontal screens. Yeah, so Today, I decided to do this live because I have to make dinner a little earlier today. Um, I got a yoga class at eight and it would be too late to start dinner after it. So, um, so I figure I was looked around the house, see what I had. Uh, we've got just a random tiny butternut squash here. And so because I love roasting squash because it's so versatile. Um, you can use it as a side, you could use it as a topping for kanji, you could throw it in soup, or what I like to do is use it as a base for salad. Um, I really like doing that because I think like a hearty squash based salads are so much more satisfying than like salads made out of just leafy greens and some stuff. I'm always hungry after leafy salads, so I always try to make mine bulky, like use uh, butternut squash or chickpeas or whatever. Hello, hello there. And one thing I should do before deciding to commit to a mushroom kanji is making sure that these mushrooms are still good. I think they are. <laughs> and this is another like theme that we have. Like we just like look in my fridge to see like what to make with them. Oh yeah, look at this. Yeah, these are beautiful. Look at these, oh, these oyster mushrooms that I got from the Asian grocery store. This was $12. And then these are probably a little suspect. We'll see. There we go. Oh, and these are great. These are beautiful. Uh, this is a mushroom medley that I got from Costco. Um, yeah, this was $12. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we're still good. Um, so I think first thing I will do Let's plan this out. Let's plan this out. Just so we can be really efficient with our time. Actually, the most efficient thing I could have done was plan this out before I started the live, but I'm not a planner. Um, the mushrooms in the medley, we look like we got some maitake, which is like hen woods. We got some um, fish mushrooms, which are like related to oysters. We got some king oysters over here, and all of these look great. I don't see any shiitake here though, but that's okay. Um, these the, are, uh, this is a lot of mushrooms to work with, especially just for uh, kanji. Um, yeah, so we're going to start with peeling the butternut squash and then cutting it up, I think medium dice, and then we'll just throw those in some oil and some curry powder and roast them. And the one thing that I do like about, one thing I do like about, uh, what's it called? these cook with me's is that I don't feel like I ever have to like be super prepared because we're just like, it's just vibes. We're just killing, we're just chilling. One thing I don't like about the horizontal thing is like how far away I have to put like the camera just so we can get, thanks. Thanks, this is my kitchen. Uh, I just recently moved into this house and I actually designed this kitchen. You guys can see that I'm wearing sweatpants because I'm gonna go work out after this, so. Where's my knife? This is like my dedicated squash cleaver. It's a bone cleaver, but um, 
I did. I did design it myself. It's it's a bone cleaver meant for like chopping up bones and like pork bones and chicken bones and stuff like that. So it's super heavy, but 90% of what I use this for is to cut up pumpkins and squash. Um, highly recommend. You can see by how thick the blade is. It's really heavy. It doesn't get particularly sharp, but sharp enough just to like make short work of a squash. I dropped a spoon. Um, I like to cut it like this first before peeling it. Where did I put my peeler? Over here. And that way you can use like the edge of the squash to like just take that off. Butternut squash is one of the squashes that I like do always peel before cooking just because like it makes this peeler is awful. I, I miss my speed peeler. Just a plain old cheese speed peeler. Um, other squashes like acorn squash or kabocha squash, you don't have to peel if you cook the skins long enough. And in fact, I prefer not to cook the skins on them. I, I prefer not to take skins off of any vegetable or squash or whatever if I can help it because in the skin is like a majority or like a high concentration of fiber some minerals. I'm not sure about vitamins, but I think mostly fiber and minerals is concentrated in the skin of any given thing. I like some crispy edges on my sauce. Oh, I do too. Acorn squash is very delicious. Um, but kab kabocha or kabocha is by far my favorite squash to work with. Um, kabocha is Japanese for pumpkin. And so it's interesting because like we call it pumpkin squash. We pretty much just call it pumpkin squash here in the United States. But if you look in like in Australia, for example, it's literally just called pumpkin, like in English. They, they just call it pumpkin there in English, but it's like this, short, squat, tiny green thing that looks nothing like the pumpkins that we have here. And in Japanese, everything is just, they call it, they call it the same thing they call kabocha, they call that pumpkin. They call the, our, our orange thing here, the things that we make like jack-o'-lanterns out of, they call that kabocha as well. Yeah. I cooked kabocha for the first time because of you and now it's my favorite, it's so good. I'm so glad you like it. There's so many different ways you can cook it. And it's like, for me, it's, well, actually my favorite squash, my favorite, favorite squash is delicata. Delicata squashes are good, but they're only available like very specific times in the year. And usually like I can get kabocha squash like any time. I can just, apparently if I'm just violent with this, it's so much easier. I was trying that hard for what? Oh, oh okay. I did not know it did that. We're fine. This little nubbin at the end is a little more difficult to take off. So we'll just cut this off with a knife. Give it a little rinse. And I will use, hold on. And 
I actually dropped my peeler earlier. And you can just use like a melon baller to take this out. And yes, anytime I do this and people are like, are you not gonna roast the seeds? Um, no, <laughs> I'm not, cause I never end up, I always roast the seeds and I'm like, oh, yay, not wasting it. Um, and then I just never end up eating them because I don't really care for roasted seeds very much. I should, once I get my garden going, I'm gonna set up a compost so I can like compost this stuff. But until then, like, I don't really see a point in trying to save what you'll never end up using. Okay, there's that. And let's just cut off this end right here. Um, let me try to move this so you're not just looking at a paper towel roll. There. <laughs> That's beautiful. somebody hold on a second hi hey there what are you doing if you don't if you've never met her before this is mochi i think she heard me making food so what are you here for i know what you're here for Here for a piece of cheese, perhaps? Yeah. She loves cheese. And we like cheats more cheese in this house than anyone else. Um, speak. Will you speak? Don't be shy. Speak. Oh, good girl, speak. Oh, good girl. There you go. Oh, sit pretty. No, that's not, that's not, no, sit. Oh, sit pretty. Oh, good girl. There you go. Okay. <coughs> Almost knocked over a pitcher. Okay, so what are we doing? We're, <laughs> we're making squash. What made you want to do a live for this? Oh! simple because like I just anytime I do like impulsive cooking or like a, hey I just have this I'm just gonna make some I figure why not I'll just make it into a live video because it's easy enough to do it's pretty easy to teach and like if it's easy enough for me to do like in an hour for a live I'll probably do it as a live um, and I'm trying to do more lives on YouTube and the YouTube lives like 
You know, the difference between like YouTube and TikTok lives is like YouTube, I feel like I always have to be doing something. There's never just like a chill vibes live that I can do on here. So if I have an opportunity or if I have an idea to like do a live on YouTube, I'll do it because I want to do it more here. Plus I want to get used to horizontal screen. Can you do a video about how to prepare bitter melt? <laughs> you see her. I can't give you just raw melon though, girl, because raw melon, uh, not melon, raw, raw uh, butternut squash has latex in it, a plant-based latex, which is why our fingers feel a little gummy when we work with melon, and that is very bad for animals. When you cook it, excuse me, when you cook, cook it, it's okay. This round part after you hollow it is hollow it out. It's always like a little bit more treacherous. So don't be a hero. Cut them all individually if you have to. I'm sure there's a safer way to do this, <laughs> but in my capacity as a professional cook, no one taught me the safer way. Do you cook for mochi too? I do, can't you tell? <laughs> if you can't tell, she's, she's very at home in the kitchen and she knows just where to stand. All right, so we've got that. Let's get a bowl. And we're gonna do a very simple thing. So this is kind of like a meal preppy thing that I'm doing right now where it's like, I'm not making, how old is Mochi? She is, how old are you? Yes, yes. I think she's five or six. Um, I think we got her shortly before the pandemic happened. But anyways, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so this is kind of like a meal preppy deal where it's like, um, I'm not really doing any kind of recipe in mind. I'm kind of making this like a basic and versatile thing to add to other stuff. Uh, so if I wanted to make this as a side, if I wanted to make like a steak for dinner and add this as a side, I can do that. If I wanted to, again, as I said, top off my kanji with this, I can totally do that. Um, yeah. But tonight what I'll do is I will take this and I'll toss it in, like use like probably like 90, per, like have a bowl where it's 90% this with like some arugula, some salad dressing and eat it as is. So we're gonna take some olive oil, just a little bit, get it nice and coated and she is like waiting for anything chopped. Some salt. It looks like I'm using a lot of salt, but I use diamond crystal kosher salt, which is puffed. And so it's aerated, which means you can use more without over salting your food. A lot of professional cooks use it, highly recommend. We've got some whole cumin here. Not gonna toast the cumin beforehand because it will roast in the oven with um, all of the squash. Who's my favorite superhero? Oh, damn. Um, that is a hard question that I was not prepared for. Um, hmm. Who's my favorite superhero? This is Deadpool. I like Deadpool a lot. Not because of Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, but the very idea of Deadpool, where he's like, so self-aware that it made him crazy. Like that's, I always found him to be very, very um, entertaining because of that. But any like fourth wall breaking hero. So I also like, uh, I also like She-Hulk. But I read the comics before the show came out. 
Mochi reminds me of, she's always around when I cook. Oh, for sure. Like, <laughs> hello. Hi there. Hi. I know, I know. Soon, soon, I'll drop some things soon. Um, okay, so we have in here cumin and salt. Another thing we should get is some curry powder because curry roasted butternut squash is delicious. So we're gonna go here. That's not where I keep my curry. Let's chop this all up. Where's my curry powder? It's here. Yes. Got a bunch of curry powders here. But we'll use this stuff. Um, I'm sorry if I've missed some, I see like I got some like super thanks or stuff. Uh, sorry about that. I think I missed, I missed whoever gave that to me and I'm, I wanna like thank you. Very grateful for that. Uh, not expected. Hello there. So as you can see, super scientific, very careful with my measuring, just, you know, Exactly that much. Add exactly that much and not a gram more. We've got some Kashmiri chili because why not? Things can always be a little more red. Kashmiri chili, if you don't know, it's not that spicy, but um, it is beautiful. So, like you, spicy. Well, no, you could be. I, I, I assume some of you can be spicy. And is there anything else we want to add to it? We're add a little bit of MSG because we want to destigmify the use of MSG and black pepper. Black pepper. I've got some white pepper here too, so we'll use that. So those are all our spiced up butternut squash. Give it a good mixy mix. It's already smelling very, very good. You can tell by how yellow the bowl is. We used plenty of spice and seasonings here. The MSG, so what MSG does is it, it's, it's, it does everything that salt does, just in a different way. Um, so salt shouldn't, wait, what's the rule? What, how, how do I say this rule best? Salt is not supposed to be a flavor. Salt is supposed to make food taste like a better version of itself. If all you taste when you're cooking food is salt, then you've added too much, right? MSG does the same thing, but with umami. So a little bit of MSG and a little bit of salt together is better than either of those things by itself. And in fact, MS, if you're like watching your sodium intake, MSG could be a healthier choice because, excuse me, because it has a quarter of the amount of sodium as salt does. So if you half the amount of salt and add a quarter of MSG, you're reducing your salt by a whole lot that you normally would have put in there. It's confusing math, at least to me, but uh, yeah. We got some, we got our sodium lined pan. See, this is why I need to get used to it. Cause like, if this was in portrait mode, like you would be able to see my face while I'm doing all this stuff which I think would be better. You can also get it on Amazon, but if you have an Asian market close by, definitely support your local Asian market. And of course, like, you know, buy it in a cute little panda shaker, cause you are worth it. I should have boiled water while we were doing all this. I would have saved time. 
That's okay. We can hang out while the water boils. I have induction, so it's fine. Not to be creepy. <laughs> so, uh, where do we roast this at? We will be roasting this at, that's uh, the roast ovens on top here. We're roasting it, so that means 400 degrees or above. And I think 45 minutes will do. Hello, London. Hello, hello, hello. All right. Kettle over. And we'll boil stuff. And then we'll clean up a little bit while that happens. Damn, I haven't seen an oven like that since you were a kid. <laughs> it is. It's an Aga stove. So I always dreamed of having this stove. Um, never thought that I would ever ha own one for myself. Uh, but, you know, with the way TikTok kind of changed my life, it made me able to afford one and also build my dream kitchen. So I was going, I had this house before I was on TikTok and, uh, I was going to like build it up room by room. And then I started doing pretty well and I was able to pay people to do it for me. And so, yeah. Kids on TikTok, you guys definitely had a hand in like helping me build this place. So thank you. To my supporters and my haters, because they paid for this too. Which is just <laughs> so satisfying to think. <laughs> so we're on induction over there. It should take not too long. You can see like the beauty of induction cooking. Um, we're on power mode and like, I just put this on, this is ice cold water from the Michigan outside and we're already starting to get a little bit of bubbles and some heat building up. It shouldn't take long to get this thing to a rolling boil. Uh, is that an always on Aga? It is, but it is a programmable one. So it's not, it isn't always on, uh, it is programmed to be on in the morning and in the evening, unless I want to manually turn it on on my own. Uh, that way it just saves power. It's not that big of a deal because besides the kitchen, the other thing I invested in when I built this house was solar power. So we got a battery and solar panels on the roof. So most of it is, it is like, I want to say 80% self-sufficient. Less so in the winter time, obviously. But yeah, all of this is, uh, all of it is electric. to be better about where I put the tripod, but while that water boils, let's clean this place up a little bit. We love an eco-friendly gang. Yeah, that's the, that's one of the platforms I decided to like get on when I decided to be a food content creator. Um, it's kind of, it's like, I don't know. I was a professional chef for a living. We worried about sustainability only in the sense that like, you know, it was also a way to save a lot of money. But in the home, people don't really like think about it as much. I figured to make it a part of my platform. If I was, I figured if I was going to get big or like have a voice anywhere, I might as well like use that voice for to do good. So helping people live sustainably if they're interested in doing it, 
eager to help. And if they're not, well, they can stay for the food. We're almost done. Okay, at this time the water is at a simmer. We're almost there. And what are we gonna do? Let's clean up these mushrooms. Oh, well. I guess only just to use the board again. Does it take longer to make your stock with induction too, or does it? Or does it taste different from using gas? I don't think it tastes different from using gas, but I mean, induction, I think induction is pretty responsive. Like for what it is, this is a big pot of cold water that we started with and it's probably been like only like a few minutes and it's we're getting to a boil already. Um, unless you have like a commercial burner. How she refuses to eat almost anything that isn't from frozen and in the oven for 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> Picky eaters, uh, I don't really deal well with them. I mean, it's easier just, you know what? At that point, just enjoy their company, order what you want, and then let them eat what they want. And I think that is the best way to do it. If, uh, I do listen to music normally. And so like, yeah, I think the easiest way to get along with someone who is a picky eater is just to like, let them be. And if they want to try some of your food, try to let them try some of your food. But otherwise, like, you know, don't stress out about it too much and don't make food like a big part of your relationship. Because it's like, if you're a, if you're a picky eater, it's not a big part of your life. So, oh, I try not to impose things that people or other people are not interested in. But definitely start like finding friends that will also go out to eat with you though, because it is a shame. Okay, so these are, as you can tell, like these are not wild. I always end up drinking wine when I cook and I put wine drinking in my food because that, that is synergy. That's brilliant. Um, you can tell these are like greenhouse mushrooms, so I'm not really all that worried about cutting off any dirty bits because there aren't that much. I'm trying to like eat as much of this as possible, so just peeling. Hi, look who's back. Peeling into manageable bits. And one great thing about mushrooms is that they don't overcook. Mushrooms are very hard to overcook, so just like if we're making a little mushroom stock to make with our kanji later, just throw them in there.
はい This texture, by the way, is like the reason why oyster mushrooms make such a good like chicken dupe when you like fry it for fried chicken. Um, it's just the way that this stuff like kind of tears almost the way that cooked fried chicken does or cooked chicken does. So yeah, if you were wondering what it was it about oyster mushrooms that gives it such like a nice quality of meat, it's that. can't have mushrooms. I don't think you can have mushrooms. Mushrooms are one of those things, Mochi, that like, I don't know if we can risk it. And I'm definitely not gonna risk it because I love you too much. should see the bed she sleeps on she actually like we have a guest room in this house but we leave that door open and we find that we found that she just like loves going there by herself and sleeping there at night so she kind of has her own room and my friend Kim visited last week and she told me that apparently Mochi was like outside her door kind of like growling a little bit <laughs> at nighttime which i think she was pissed because like that's her room in her mind give her a pat yeah i'll give her a pat Okay, uh, we've got more mushrooms to put in there, but let's just stir this a little bit first. Oh, thank you, M.W. Bowen. What do you recommend for an induction? Hold on. Let me get that again. What do you recommend for an induction cooktop for the for home cooking? Well, a lot of great ranges and stoves have induction now as an option for their cooktop. And I think that's great because those tend to be higher power ones. And the high power inductions, and by high power, I mean like the, the ones that like plug into like dryer plugs, pretty much. We're just gonna peel and toss these in. Um, those ones are gonna be the ones that can actually be powerful enough to compete with gas. But if you kinda of wanna just like experiment at home with induction, you can purchase like a sub $100, um, a sub $100 like induction cooktop that you can get on like Amazon or something. Unfortunately, they don't really have any name brands that stick out one after, one is better than the other, except maybe like uh, the control freak, but that's like over a thousand dollars. And at that point you might as well just buy yourself like a whole ass oven with the induction cooktop on top of that.
wish there were shiitakes in the house. Shiitakes would make, oh, they are. Yep, this smells like a shiitake mushroom. Stem and all. All right, these king oysters are a little chunky, so we're gonna cut these down. I hope that answered your question about induction. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you've never used it before, yeah, buy yourself a cheap one and get used to it. And then once you kind of like get a night, once you like get comfortable with it, then you can like start investing in like kitchen equipment level stuff. Um, unless you want to take the plunge. It is future technology, so definitely worth investing in. And it's better for you like in the long run as well, because whatever, min anything to like minimize like gas fumes in the house, right? Okay, so that is pretty much all I need to do with this. I need to just like boil this down because I need, let's see. Is this stock I only used? Oh my gosh, Yvonne, thank you so much. That is so kind of you. I really appreciate it. Um, is this for stock? I've only used dried mushrooms for stock. How do you think fresh compares? Is it worth the extra price? So, I'm wondering about the quantity of mushrooms I put in. Mm, I wasn't really paying attention. Let me see. That was like one, 1.3 pounds of oyster mushrooms and um, probably one pound of mixed mushrooms. And so when you're making stock, you should use dried mushrooms. When mushrooms are dry, they actually have their flavor concentrated. The only reason why I'm using fresh mushrooms for this Well, I appreciate it very much. I appreciate that you appreciate it. Um, and I'm happy if, I'm ha happy that we like can cook together, at least in this way. Um, but the reason why I'm using fresh mushrooms is because I plan to like eat them as part of what I'm making. The beautiful part about mushrooms, as I said before, is that it's very, very difficult to overcook mushrooms. I can boil these like once I boil these past the point of cooking, it's hard for me to overboil them um, just because of the way that mushroom structure is. So this way, I'm using a lot of fresh, fresh mushrooms. And so I'm making like a mushroom flavored stock to cook my oats with, but also we'll be adding these mushrooms to the oats itself to further give me something more to eat. So I'm making mushroom kanji today and kanji is like a porridge or a gruel that's made of rice normally. But I also, I like to use oats when I make it because of the higher rate of fiber and protein in oats. It's a little bit of like, a, the reasons why I do it for myself are health re related, <laughs> health and fitness related. Um, but otherwise, like I do love rice kanji. Would you add kombu or keeping it simple? Um, I'm going to add a little bit of chicken powder to this because 
it, when you make kanji with oats, oats has an innate nuttiness and sweetness that makes me automatically think of oatmeal. So it needs a little bit of extra boost so that it kind of gives you that like kanji vibe. But savory oats is not like a new thing. I think like Scottish people eat savory oats as like a regular dish. The only reason why I like say call it kanji is because like it's what I know this texture and this flavor to be. But yeah, it's totally just like savory oats. Savory soupy oats. I think actually I could just add oats to this and let this go this way. Another reason why would you use something like better than bouillon? Similar to grits. Yes, they're all related. Oats, uh, kanji, grits, and polenta. They're all cousins. Um, instead of better than bouillon, I use this stuff. Li uh, gum chicken powder, chicken bouillon powder. It's like, a, if you use like Maggi cubes at home, it's kind of like that, but it's like a, a loose powder form. It lets me control it a little bit more easily or control the quantities a little bit more easily. So I'm just gonna add like that much. That'll give it a nice little salty and umami kick to it. Um, and to, and now I can feel like this getting nice and thick. So, thank you, M.W. Bowen. What do you do, what do you like for chef's knives? Any recommendations? I do. Let me just do the oat portion of this and we can get to that. Um, for kanji, I use steel cut oats. This is actually not, I just like buy from Costco big bags of steel cut oats. I've been using this container for years. Uh, and the quantities for kanji and oats are the same as it would be for rice. So it is like nine cups of water, nine cups of water for every cup of oats. So it'd be nine cups of water for every cup of rice. I am going to guess that this has like nine, nine cups is two quarts. This seems like it's probably like I'd say this is two quarts. I can all, and the best thing about kanji is like, if it's too thick, you can always add more water. If it's too loose, you can like, let it cook down and thicken up on its own. Kanji is a very easy dish to do by feel. You could also like, this, uh, what do you call it? These rice cookers, these fancy rice cookers with like the pressure sensors on them and stuff like that, they actually have a porridge setting that is pretty much a, that is a kanji setting. So I could actually like throw all that in there, push that button and trust that it would make it as long as I followed the directions for like measurements and stuff. So there we go. We are going to have to watch this because there's a lot of soluble fiber in this, which means when you boil this, it will have a tendency to foam and boil over. So you'll have to reduce it. So we'll bring it to a boil first, pretty much waking up the oats. And then we'll reduce it to a simmer and let the movement of the water flow kind of emulsify all the oats in there to make a nice hearty mushroom congee. So these things, this is like just a spoon and hot lid holder I got on Amazon. This is a great, it's great. I got like three of these. Cause it's nice not to like put wet utensils on stuff. I'm so old. I'm so, I care. Old people things excite me now. <laughs> All right, we're at a boil. Let's reduce down to like seven. Hopefully that won't overgo. And we'll talk about knives. So what was it exactly that you wanted to know about knives? What do you like for chef's knives? Any recommendations? Kanji is so good for you. Um, so for Western chef's knives, if you are at the level where you want to buy like a really nice, 
worth the money chef's knife. I do like Miyavi very much. Um, they are my choice for Western knives. If you wanna buy Chinese chef's knives, which is what I have here, I got actually, I love them so much I use two of them. I have two of them. This is a the CCK small cleaver. Um, if you ever plan on making a trip to Hong Kong, buy these there. They are four times cheaper. These are like, these were $90. Last I checked online, these were $90, but that was before inflation. So that might be a lot. In Hong Kong, before inflation, they were 90 Hong Kong dollars, which is closer to like barely 20 bucks. So yeah, shipping is expensive. Um, I will say recently, this company sent me this knife, um, Headley and Bennett. I don't know how much it is, but it's, but it's a perfect, it's a very, very decent chef's knife. I was very impressed that an apron company produced a knife that nice. Also, Zwilling and Henkels, they have, they produce very good affordable knives. Um, so this is a bread knife that I use by them. I use a fish. This is a fish bone, boning knife that I use by them and a paring knife that I use by them. Perfectly fine. Very usable, easily sharpenable, highly recommend. And then like, yeah, Miyabi for your nice ones. But I will say this, um, as much as I like, I'm a collector of knives for sure. Like this one is like a custom guy that's like, like I was like charged, like charges like a thousand dollars for his knives. Um, I don't think most people need to spend that much money on their knives. I would rather you, instead of spending like 100, and I actually did a short on this, and I said this exact same thing on the short. Um, instead of you spending 100, 200, $500 on like a knife, take whatever you were gonna spend on one knife and instead buy two cheaper knives. Buy two, oops, buy two cheaper knives that you like. And instead of having like one new knife and then always have one like freshly sharpened. So if you like, you know, if you know how to sharpen them yourself, that's great. If you don't know how to sharpen your own knives, um, that's okay because quite frankly, I don't really think if you're a casual kitchen user that it is a skill worth spending a lot of time and money learning how to do. Um, I actually have used the knife aid thing where you s literally put your knives in an envelope in the mail and ship them off and then they send it back to you within like a few, within a week um, and it's perfectly sharp. So I would rather you spend like half the amount of money on two knives and then always send one out to get sharpened instead of like one really good knife that is only sharp like once or once a year. Uh, yeah. A cheap knife that is sharp, that is constantly sharpened is way better than like a really expensive knife that is only sharp once. So that's my recommendation for knives. Other brands that I enjoy are Global. Global is a good like beginner knife brand. And it's also like an affordable professional knife company. So it's, uh, oh, this is smelling really good <laughs> um it's also a good like a lot of professional use use their knives very easy to sharpen very easy to take care of as well um shun you'll see that a lot at knife stores and stuff like that pretty pricey for what they are um easy, i would easily call them overpriced unless the place that you buy them from will sharpen them for free. Some knife stores will be like, if you buy this knife from us, we'll sharpen them for free for like, I don't know, next few years or whatnot. Uh, buy two, buy two cheaper ones than the most expensive ones that you're willing to buy and then constantly go back and send it back to get it sharpened by them. 
then you'll get your money's worth real fast because sharp knives are safe knives. The sharper the knife, the safer the knife. So where are you guys from? Where, where, are we, where are we chatting from? I don't really get on here enough that I like really have an understanding of, of where we are from here. And I'm curious, I wanna know more about y'all. Chicago, wonderful, Lansing, really nice chef knife for Christmas, yeah. Fun ideas and recipes for it. Um, tell that to my poor pinky finger, oh no. Winnipeg, Washington, oh, Philippines, hello. New Zealand, South Bend, Indiana. Is that Notre Dame? Is that Fighting Irish? I think so. San Jose, LA, Washington, Chicago, the Netherlands. Scotland, currently in us. Hello, hi everybody. Um, this cutting board is called a high soft cutting board. It is Japanese. And it is very good for keeping your knife sharp because it's soft rubber. What I quickly learned is that they are not dishwasher safe because they will warp and melt. <laughs> and they will very, very easily melt because they are so soft. So a little bit of a learning curve, a hand wash only, but they keep my knife sharp. So. I am starting to smell, oh no. Okay, I thought the music cut off. I don't know how long, where do you get the Jap, um, you can just get them from any like Japanese knife store, Japanese knife imports. I'm sure Corin, if I think they've got a store in New York, um, K-O-R-I-N, they probably sell them. Um, but they're really, really good for like, to protect the sharpness of your knives. But you know what, any kind of like particle board, would be fine too. I have wood cutting boards that I like. I don't know how long I kept the squash in there for, and I totally forgot about it until now, but I smell it. So at the very least, we're close to ready by the smell. That is not the oven that I put it in. This is the baking oven. I'm still getting acquainted with this thing. Yeah. Wicker just said content. Ooh, we're almost there. We're almost there. We can put this on the broil for a little second, which is just the top of this oven. There we go. I'd say like, that needs probably like five more minutes. Let's do a timer. Let's actually use a timer. Oh, the knife grinder. Oh man, professional knife grinders. Yeah, those guys are, they would come in their little stools and stuff. These timers are great. So if you ever decide you're gonna invest in an egg timer, cause you've got both of these on Amazon. There is one with these ridges on them and there's one that is perfectly smooth. Buy the one with the ridges on them because this one's magnet will actually stick. This one's magnet is so weak it falls off. So yeah. I like this one way better and it costs like about the same. It's like, you know, just put it on there and it's nice. Um, this one, it'll fall off and make a loud noise. Not very pleased with that. <laughs> Early morning in Taipei, hello. Hello, hello, hello. We are starting to, the oats are starting to bloom or like open up and it's starting to thicken. It's gonna get, yeah, guys, this is gonna be so hearty and delicious. The only unfortunate thing with mushrooms is, is when you cook them for a long time, they, everything just turns kind of like a muddy brown. Uh, 
Oh, thank you for joining us. Hey, look, it's a huge and well-lit new kitchen. Hi, somebody has been with us for a while. <laughs> nice to see you joining us. Yes, it is large and I love it. School recommendations for culinary. Um, I don't know where you're based. I don't really think that makes a difference. Uh, I never went to culinary school. I went to law school and uh, I don't use that very much. But I would say more useful than going to culinary school because I've worked with people who went to culinary school and people who have not. Some of the best cooks I've ever known did not. I don't think Sad Poppy, I don't think he went. I don't think a cook named Matt went to culinary school. I think he's just a lifelong cook too. Um, you will learn just as much doing an apprenticeship or a stage at your favorite restaurant. And these days they'll pay you for it because people are just so desperate for any kind of hands on deck help. You'll learn more working at a restaurant for a couple years than you will at a restaurant, uh, at a culinary school for the same amount of time. And you won't spend tens of thousands of dollars um, to go. That being said, I've heard really good things by, uh, about Culinary, Internas Culinary Institute of America, CIA in New York, but really expensive. Just go work at a restaurant because every, every culinary school graduate that I've met or I've worked with or has crossed into the friends restaurants that I've worked at as well, like they're, they're, so, they're so slow. <laughs> they, they work so slow. Um, it's, it, you'll learn, yeah. The skills that you learn in the kitchen, in a professional kitchen, will be the same and you won't be massively in debt. The only time culinary school has a leg up over, I guess, you know, not culinary school, um, would be if you're after the certifications, which would be if you're like after jobs that require you to be like a certified master chef and stuff, but that's like country clubs and stuff like that. A lot of people go into that to retire because those are easier jobs, less exciting, less creative, but usually they have like health insurance and retirement plans and unions, union cooks. It's awesome. I, I love talking to them about their day. They're so bored and so unafraid of what their future has in store for them. Which one of those herbs could I live without? Mm, can't live without basil. Cause basil, actually we use it in like Taiwanese cooking and Southeast Asian cooking. Some Chinese cooking too. Taiwanese cooking is Chinese cooking. Um, ethnically speaking. Uh, rosemary, mmm, rosemary or thyme? It's a hard choice between rosemary and thyme. I think I'd keep rosemary. I think I'd keep rosemary, but only because I also like to decorate with rosemary. But that's, um, I would miss thyme. Do you have a favorite genre of music? Any favorite artists or groups? Um, I do. I like Neo Soul and R&B. Oh, speaking of soul, somebody asked me if I like soul food. I love soul food. You can't live in Detroit and not love soul food. Um, I like Neo Soul and R&B. When I was younger, I loved listening to artists like Erica Badu. And now I like SZA and her and Frank Ocean and uh, Janae Aiko. I just like listening to this like kind of like lo-fi pop culture, this playlist I call pop culture lo-fi, but I like listening to this because it's easy to play in the background and it's like still kind of fun. 
it can another, I will say another 10 minutes. Son is a pastry chef. Pastry chef is different than a cook. If you're gonna be a pastry chef, either stage at a very reputable restaurant with a really good pastry program or go to school because that is, that's like, that's like deciding your, okay, if you are going to, hi, Hugo. Hi, buddy. Hello, little man. This is, this is Hugo. He's very old. He does not know what's happening. He might run into that wall. He's not. Okay. Hi. Hello. Okay. That's okay. It's okay. You know, shakes are hard. Shakes are hard. He's 16 years old. He knows not what is happening. Um, and he's over me. He's, he's over me. Oh. Nope, he's just, he's just walking in circles. Hi there, hello. Hi, hello old person, hello, hi. Um, so I compare being a cook to like being an artist. You can be an artist and not go to art school. That's that's fine. Um, you can still go to, you can be an artist and not having gone to an art school and, and still your chances of doing well if you're talented and work hard, you will be, you'll be, you'll be fine. If you're gonna be a pastry chef or a baker, that's like saying, and if you're gonna be a pastry chef or a baker and not go to culinary school, that's like saying, I'm gonna be a chemist and I'm not gonna go to school to be a chemist. <laughs> it's uh, not impossible, but it's gonna be really, really difficult. Um, pastry, art, and baking uh, is just, uh, it's just so exact of a science that being supervised by someone, exact of a science and intricate in every detail to make, that makes you like, that sets you apart as a good pastry chef, um, it would just benefit you by like being surrounded by like a master and uh, and have the opportunity to practice things over and over and over again in like a classroom setting. So pastry, baking, even, well, bread, bread and pasta, I feel like you could learn from someone with a good program, but yeah. Good morning, Singapore, hello there. Ah, I saw a video recently about, it was a TikTok about Singaporeans talking about like what Singaporean food they thought was overrated and they were saying things like chicken rice and laksa and um, nasi goreng. And one person said chili crab. And I was just like, oh my God. I, this are, these are all reasons for me to go, to go to Singapore. Hi, we switched. Hello. Well, <laughs> both of you. I've got, I'm being seen by both, both, both babies. We are almost done here. So this kanji is going to take a little while more and probably we'll end the video before this is perfectly done, but we will test this because it's already like, the oats are cooked. We'll do this for taste. Delicious. This is so good. It needs some, it needs salt and it needs a touch of MSG, but otherwise tasty as fuck. Mm. And white pepper. It needs white pepper. So salt. Um, you can't really, I feel like kanji without white pepper is like always missing something. So we will get that over here. Chili pepper, Szechuan pepper, different kind of pepper, white pepper.
we'll just uh, make a batch so that we have some for later. <laughs> oh, I would love to get back to Singapore someday. I haven't been there in a really, really long time. Ginger? I always have ginger. Um, hmm, do I want ginger with mushroom? I do not. I'm so used to like, if I make like a fish kanji or a chicken kanji, it's like ginger, duh. But I don't think with mushroom kanji, it's necessary. That's really good, Hugo. And now. Okay, you guys get the back off. Hot oven, hot oven. D remember the last time what happened when you licked this door? Girl, don't. It's not worth it. At least last time I was making duck. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Good girl. Who learned from last time? You did. You did. <laughs> All right. So. We got this, and what I will do when this is cooled, I'll just put it in the fridge, and I'll have like butternut squash to use. I could top this with this, because I know that that will go, but I'm just gonna toss it in with some like balsamic vinegar and arugula, and maybe some like broccoli, some roasted broccoli, and that will be my dinner tonight. Um, and that's really all I had planned for today. Mochi like the oven door, yes, I was roasting duck, and she really liked duck. And she didn't scream or yelp or anything, but she, I could tell that she, she was not happy. <laughs> Get her scowl. Her little lower lip. I don't know if you could see her. Like, hi baby, you're okay about you, but you're fine. Okay, so that is it for today. Um, I guess maybe I'll post in the comments when this live like goes on. Uh, when this live goes on, I will just like post the recipe and what I did in like the description of it. Uh, otherwise, thank you all for joining me. It has been almost 80 minutes on this. I don't think anyone else is gonna watch this all the way through. But yeah, when we post, we'll post the recipe on the live in the description here. Just come back to it. Don't have to watch all of this all over again. But it has been very nice hanging out with all of you. And thank you so much for like keeping me company while I've been like cooking and stuff. And Mochi thanks you as well. Yes. <laughs> I will see you guys hopefully again soon. Um, I don't know, I've been feeling like, I've been wanting to make Brazilian food. And I've already done like a video on how to make Brazilian food. So naturally next, next I'll, I'll do a live while making it. So we'll make some fish water next time. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you again so much. And it was great to see you guys.